Sergeant Mike Rosa, he's in charge of one of our major crime squad, which also has our hate crimes unit uh, underneath it. Um, the details of this case uh, isn't tremendous, but they're very important that we get in front of this because we have to send a clear message out there. And that message is, you know, it doesn't matter your race, color, creed, gender, sexual orientation, the Pasco Sheriff's Office is gonna uphold the laws to make sure everybody's safe. David Boyer, who was arrested, um, moved into a neighborhood in our holiday neighborhood um, where an Iraqi family already lived. At some point he starts making statements that he doesn't like the victim's family and they shouldn't be here because of their nation of origin. Uh, right now we have two parallel cases going on. One is an ongoing investigation. Uh, that ongoing investigation includes some of the things that have happened where um, he's, the David Boyer is a suspect in throwing nails in the road at the victim's family's car and he went through their mailbox. Uh, what we were able to make an arrest on already was that he broke into the victim's family's home, uh, he stole a purse from the victim, and so we were able to make an a charge for burglary of an unoccupied dwelling. Burglary of an unoccupied dwelling. The other part is we're gonna be working with our state attorney's office for a special hate crime enhancement. So within the state of Florida, when somebody commits a crime like this and it's clearly by the statements made by the suspect that he did it as a hate crime, we work with the state attorney's office to get an enhancement which will be one degree higher on the charges. We've also referred this to the FBI and we have a great partnership with the FBI and we look forward to working with them on this case. That is a federal separate charge. So that involves, you know, the case that just goes on along with the other portions of the nails and with going through the mailbox, which is part of the ongoing investigation. Our victim services, victim advocate, has been working with the family. Uh, very early on, we want to make sure this family understands that the sheriff's office is there to help them, like any victim in the county. Uh, we're working with them right now so that they can go out there and get a restraining order from this individual and make sure the family's safe. The other one thing, which is, you know, it's heartbreaking this crime occurs, it's heartbreaking what happened, but what really is, you know, to us the most disturbing is when there's children involved. And there's four young children that are part of this family. And we want to make sure they realize is that the sheriff's office and the community is there for them. Because these things should never happen. The other thing, you know, with David Boye, just so everybody's out there aware, is that he has priors, none of them within Pasco County. He's been arrested for DUI, theft, burglary, and disorderly. And so, as I said before, we are working with this family because we want to make sure they realize that we're there for them, we support them, but we also want to make sure we send that clear message out there. It doesn't matter your race, color, creed, gender, or sexual orientation. This sheriff's office, this Pasco Sheriff's Office, will uphold the laws of the state and the federal government to make sure that you are protected. So, any questions? Did he explicitly say to your investigators that he targeted the family because they're Middle Eastern? Yes, that was what. Within the investigation, uh, talking to our deputies out there is that he said he does not like them. Um, he wished they weren't in this community, and which is ironic because he's the one who moved into our community. And so he explicitly made those statements that he did not want them there, and he was going to make it his point to get them out of our community. So did he make those uh, statements to patrol deputies, and w were they wearing body-worn cameras? And if that's an admission or a confession, whether you want to release it or the state attorney during discovery, will the, is there video evidence of them making those statements? Yeah, I have not seen the video. It is stated that the deputy had their body-worn camera on, so I'm not sure exactly what point, but yes, that, this is all part of the evidence that will be presented for the state attorney and to the FBI. What's the nature of the priors? Were they involving this crime? Not, not that I'm aware of. I just know it was, you know, a DUI, the theft, the burglary, disorderly, I think was in Pinellas County, but not sure if any of them were hate crime related. Too bad you can't send them to uh, Highlands County, huh? You get, a, you get a warrant there and they don't want them. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, we can we can we can extradite him down there after we're, after we're done with him up here. We're, we're hoping that with the state attorney with the FBI, is that he won't be in any community for a while. But this is just one of those things. It's absolutely disgusting. It's absolutely horrific, and everybody should feel warmed and welcome who are here. When it comes to statistics in this county, would you say that hate crimes are are just uh, random, or are they more uh, pervasive here? Yeah, I'll let Sergeant Rosa get into that too, also, but. It's random. This is, our community is no different than any other community. And you know, you, I, we have disturbed people, like every community has some disturbed people. And so I just want to make sure, you know, that a clear statement. We want to get ahead of it because this is one of those things, that family was living here peacefully, those children, 
should feel welcomed in our community. And so this is one of those things that is just absolutely horrific. So I'll let the sergeant go into the other part. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Michael Rose. I'm a sergeant of the Major Crimes Unit at the Pasco Sheriff's Office. Uh, to answer your question, we have very few hate crimes within our county. I believe this year in 2019, we had, it's the first one that's been reported. Um, last year, I don't have the exact statistics, but it's extremely low. What is the sample training or what did they indicate? How are they reacting to this and what are their thoughts? Well, um, I did not speak to the family myself, but uh, obviously they're very upset about this. They're very worried about the, the, the suspect, the defendant, but uh, our unit is helping the family with an uh, injunction at this time. Thank you. General, to address some rhetoric across the country right now, the suspect appears to have made some statements that we've seen across the country in regards to the president and stuff like that. Uh, can you just reiterate what he told your um, investigators so that we will handle it? Yeah, I, I, don't have the, I don't have the actual case in front of me, the notes in front of me. I just have my notes from the case of what I wrote down. But yeah, no, he, he just was anti-Middle Eastern, it sounds like. He said he was anti those that are in the community. And he was going to do something about it, but I think that's the one thing to us is you know there's a family, they have these kids, you know they had every right to be in our community, they had every right to live a peaceful life, and, you know this country was founded as a melting pot, that everybody comes here that you know we work together, and there's a process, and in that process we should all be one country and one country united, and so for this individual to do that it's absolutely scary, because there's long-term ramifications. And that's why we have to step in. There are four young children. There are four young children that an individual came to their house and did these crimes. There's four young children that we cannot allow that mark of this crime to be on them forever. Because if you look historically and you look at evidence, it shows that when people don't feel welcome who should be here and they're doing the right thing, there's an opportunity for them to become radicalized later on. And so those are the type of things that we have to be ahead of the curve. We have to make sure this individual does not represent our community. And we have to make sure that these young children recognize that the sheriff's office and the community is not representative of this one individual. Reading the, the notes, it seems like a neighbor across the street came to your victim's aid right. by giving important information, becoming a witness to this. So right. people stood up and said something. Yeah, and, and that's a, it's, a, it's a great point about the neighbor. I, I applaud that neighbor. I applaud that neighbor for stepping up, doing the right thing. Because a lot of times in our society, people can just you know turn a blind eye, say, I don't want to be involved. That neighbor stepped up and did the right thing. That neighbor got involved and said something. So I applaud that neighbor, and I thank that neighbor, and that just really shows who our community really is. The suspect also had nails, it appears, through screws at the, sorry, excuse me, yeah, through the screws at the, Right. Mm -hmm. that, does that take it to the next level? That's, where, that's part of the ongoing. So there's two separate, there was one investigation where we made an arrest. Okay. There's a separate investigation that's going on right now that is we are looking at several other things that have happened. Um, the nails going through the mailbox. So there, there will be more of an investigation. This is still part of an ongoing investigation. Without getting too political, it says yeah. in the report that uh, this man said Trump will handle it. It looks like that's a quote. Do you think, in your opinion, that right. the president incites this kind of behavior? No, I think this individual causes his own issues. Yeah. How long have the family been in this neighborhood? And yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm aware, though, that the victim's family have been there longer than the um, suspect. Any chance that he might today bring some of that body more cameras to illustrate some of the work that I don't know, let me work with the detectives on that case. Um, the one thing we don't want to do, now that we're working with the fed federal agency, with the FBI, we don't want to do anything to hinder the investigation. It's more important for us that justice is served, and so we want to make sure we do everything proper. We don't want to overstep or do something that would hinder a further investigation or a further prosecution. Well, the and Sheriff, it's a, the, oh, it's a, it says, uh, she says here that uh, uh, the victim does, that uh, she was missing Mm -hmm. purse, but he says that uh, he didn't take anything. At least that's what I read. Is, has any of that stuff turned up, or did you find any of that on his person? And if it's deeper in here, I apologize. For my right. Opinion. No, and that's a, that's part of the investigation that we haven't found anything at this time. He admits to going in that house, just just going in that house alone, 
is the crime itself. Was he hoping that they were home? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Sorry. Okay. And did he have a weapon on him or, or any kind? Not that I know of. Not, not, I can tell you definitively he didn't have a, he had a pocket knife and he had a lighter when the deputy stopped him. I don't know what he had when he went into that house. What happens now? Right now we're working with the state attorney's office and then I said part of that investigation with the FBI is that we're going to work with them to see if there could be federal charges. And do you know how, like I know it's when you, you were talking about when he moved into the neighborhood, do you know how long this, this victim had to put up with, with this type of harassment? It, it seems like from the Pasco Sheriff's Office standpoint, it's only happened the past two days. We don't know any, I don't have anything, we just had a meeting, we had a meeting earlier about this, there was nothing that seems like anything had happened prior to that. But the one point uh, you just made about what's next, you know, the investigations are important, the investigations are critical, but probably one of the key points is our victim advocate's office working with the victim and their family, making sure that those kids understand that there's a community that cares for them, and the victim understands there's people that care for them. And do you have an age, uh, ages on the children, if it's in your own policy? I don't have the ages, do you, have, do you know the ages? Sorry, I don't know. No, I just know that it's kept telling Ritter, we kept being told that they were very young. All right. Thank you, Thank you all very Thank much. You. Appreciate Thank it. You.